Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem permutation in a string. And there's actually two solutions to this problem. One is the 26 times n solution. And there's another solution that's actually just big O of n. Now we know that a constant number here doesn't actually affect the overall time complexity. But that being said, I'm still going to focus on the slightly more optimal solution. Uh, because it's a little bit more difficult, but it's also interesting and it's a pattern that's actually used in other leak code problems as well. So we're given two strings, S1 and S2, and all we wanna do is return true if the string S2 contains a permutation of S1, and we return false if that's not the case. Now, you can get bogged down and really confused with the explanation of this problem, like focusing a ton on permutations, but I'm gonna try to simplify this for you immediately without going down too many rabbit holes. And let's actually take a look at this first example. So we see that S1 is the target string. That's what we're trying to look for. We're looking for a permutation of this string somewhere inside of S2. Can we find it? Now, what does permutation mean? Well, we could actually, you know, create a permutation of the string, which would be really complex and annoying. Uh, but we see that over here, there actually is a substring of S2 and it's a permutation that matches S1. It's BA, right? The exact same characters, just in a different order, which is perfectly fine. Now, by the way, AB itself technically counts as a permutation of itself. So this string is also allowed, but since you kind of see what we're really just looking for is, is there a substring of the exact same size? So this is two characters. So we have to look for a substring of two characters here, right? We can't just take three characters and say that that's the permutation, but you know, we're looking for a window same size as this, and it has to contain the exact same characters as S1, just maybe in a different order. Now, does that kind of sound familiar to you? Well, it's the same thing as looking for an anagram, right? We're just looking for the exact same characters. We don't care about what order they're in, right? So it's looking for an anagram. So we can actually use a typical sliding window technique. We're gonna look at every window in S2 that's the exact same size as S1. So in this case, length two. So we're gonna look at the first two characters, then the next two characters, then the next two, et cetera, et cetera, until we find an exact match with S1. Now, if we were actually comparing the exact characters, that would be pretty annoying. The time complexity in that case would, let's say, be n times m, where n is the size of s2, m is the size of s1, because we're looking at every single window. But we can do it a little bit better. We can reduce it to be 26 times n if we use a hash map, because actually in this problem, it's written all the way at the bottom of the description, so it's not on screen, but they tell us that all the characters in both of the strings are gonna be limited to lowercase a through lowercase z, so therefore the size of our hash map is gonna be at most size 26. There's only 26 characters. So as we build that hash map, we're actually going to have two hash maps. We're going to have one hash map for S1, which is going to stay the exact same. We're also going to have a second hash map for S2, which is going to have the characters of the current window that we're at. So every time we create a window, right, each time we shift our, our window to the right, we're only just adding one character and maybe removing the character that was on the left. And then once we have those two hash maps, we're gonna compare them if they are equal, which is a 26 operation, right? There's only 26 characters. And so that's where we get this time complexity from, but there actually is a better way. This solution is doable, it's easy to code up, and you can do so if you would like, but I'm gonna show you the slightly more optimal solution, which is actually not even gonna have this 26. It's just gonna be big O of N. So let's look at the big O of N solution. And it's actually similar to the previous solution we discussed. We're actually gonna still have two hash maps, one for S1. So as you can see, we counted the occurrences of each character, we call it S1 count. So we have one A, we have one B and one C. So we filled our hash map with the same values. And our S2 hash map is empty because first we're gonna set our window here and then we're gonna continue to shift it by one each time. But the difference here is we're not actually gonna be comparing the two hash maps together. We won't need to because we're gonna keep track of one more variable. We're gonna call it matches. We're, we're basically going to have a little shortcut. Initially, this is gonna be set to zero. I'll just create a box for it, even though it's just gonna be a single 
single uh, value, but we might be updating it to other values. But this matches variable is basically going to be a shortcut that's going to allow us to not have to compare the entire hash maps each time, which we know in the worst case could be a 26 operation, having to look through every single character of the hash maps. Because this matches variable is actually going to maintain the total number of equal characters in each of these hash maps. And actually, even though I didn't draw the entire uh, map for S1 and S2 in this case, because actually we know that there's A through Z, there's 26 characters, and I didn't actually draw out the entire thing, but we are gonna uh, you know, fill in the values in the code because we know that the rest of the characters in S1 are gonna be of count zero, right? And matches is going to tell us the exact number of matches of each character between the two hash maps. So we want to know, does the A count of S1 and of S2 match? If it does match, then that's a plus one. If it doesn't match, then that's not a plus one, right? And we want to know the number of matches for every single character. And we want to know that initially. Right, it could be 26 matches or it could be zero matches, right? It could be any value in between. But once we have 26 matches, that means that for some window in S2, and by looking at it, we know that this is gonna be the window. We know that this window has 26 matches with this window because they both have a single A character, a single B character, a single C character. And for the other remaining 23 characters, they have uh, but they both have zero of those characters, so therefore they have 26 matches. That's what we care about, and we can do that with a single variable without having to look through the entire hash map. Let me show you the algorithm to do that. It's pretty straightforward, actually. So first thing we're going to do is actually just look at the first three characters of S2 and then fill up our hash map. So we have a single B, we have a single A, and we have a single X. Now you can see that this is what our hash maps actually look like. We have looked at the first three characters, and now what we're actually going to do, for the only time, we are actually going to iterate through both of these hash maps comparing each character. We actually do have to do that at least one time, but it's a single 26 operation. So, and then after that, we'll only have to just iterate through this string. So the overall time complexity is going to be n plus 26, which we know is going to be equal to big O of n. Uh, it's it's definitely better than if we were just doing 26 times n. Okay, so we're going to look at every character. A, they both have one A, they both have one B. S1 has a single C, but S2 does not have any Cs. So therefore, they have two matches, A and B, but C is not a match. Then we're going to look at all the other characters after C, and we're actually going to see that, yes, there is a match. Right, because they both have zero Ds, they both have zero Es, they have zero Fs, etc., etc. But then we're going to get to X. Okay, this has a single X, but S1 does not have any Xs. That's not a match, but they both have zero Ys and zero Zs. So all in all, they actually matched every single character except for C and except for X. Those were the only characters they didn't match. So actually, initially we have 24 matches. Next, we're gonna look, we're gonna take our window, which was like this, and we're gonna shift it to the right by one. When we shift it, we're obviously removing a character from the S2 window, we're removing a B. Now, as we make changes to the count, we wanna know now, does it affect the number of matches? So here we have one, right, which was equal to what it was supposed to be in S1 as well. But now we're now changing it to a zero. So therefore, it's not matching with what it previously was matching with. Therefore, our matches total is actually going to be updated now to be 23. We're decrementing it by one. Okay, but we also added a character, a Y. Does this affect our matches? Was this a character we were looking for? Well, let's increment our I by one, and we see that now it's one, but what was the Y value in S1's count? It was equal to zero, so now we actually created another mismatch. So actually, the total number of matches is going to be 22 now. And now we're going to actually shift one more time. So this A is no longer going to be in our window. Now we're going to have X, Y, Z in our window. 
So we remove the A, A count is now gonna be set to zero. We created another mismatch, so our matches count is now gonna be 21, but we added a Z, so uh, our Z count is one, but the Z count in S1 is zero. Therefore, we created another mismatch, so now our total uh, number of matches is actually gonna be 20. Now let's shift our window one more time. Let's chop off this X. So X count is now gonna be set to zero, so let's update that. X count is now set to zero, which is good for us because S1's X count was also zero. So therefore we can actually increment our number of matches now, right? So let's uh, set matches now equal to 21. We also added a character. We added this A character at the top. So let's actually increment the number of A's. We went from having zero A's to now having one A, and that's what we were looking for, right? Because one A is also found in S1 count. So now we can increment our number of matches from 21 to be 22. We're getting closer to our goal. And I'm gonna kind of fast forward the remaining two spots. Clearly, we're gonna see that the Y gets chopped off, and then we're gonna be two, uh, we're gonna add the B character, which is also what we wanted to do, right? We have one B and we have zero Y's. So that brings us to be 24 matches. And then we're gonna shift one more time uh, to be at this last window. We're gonna get rid of the Z that we, uh, that we didn't really need. So now our number of Zs is zero. That's good, that's exactly what we want. And we added a C character. So now we have one C. Now we have the exact number of matches we were looking for. Our matches count is gonna be 26. Whenever we get to 26 uh, matches, that's our magic number, we are gonna go ahead and stop the algorithm and return true because all we're looking for is does does there exist a single permutation of this in S2? Or in other words, does there exist an anagram of S1? And there does, we found it, we return true immediately, and we can stop the algorithm. That's the big O of end time algorithm. Now let's actually code it up. Okay, now let's write the code, but there's just one little edge case we actually have to look for that I didn't talk about previously, and that's if our S1 string is actually shorter, or actually rather longer than our S2 string, uh, which would make it impossible for us to find a permutation of S1 in S2. In that case, we can just return false immediately. But after that, we can get into our standard algorithm. Even though I was talking about hash maps, we can actually implement these with arrays as well because we are getting fixed values, uh, lowercase a through lowercase z, and we can convert those characters to be uh, integers, and we can use those integers as indices, indexes of our uh, two array. So initially, I'm just going to set these to be 26 uh, numbers, and each of those uh, numbers is just going to be a zero for now. Uh, we're going to go through every character in S1, and we're going to go, so suppose S1 is maybe three characters long. At the same time as we're going through S1, we're also going to go through the first, let's say, three characters of S2. So we're going to initialize both of these hash maps at the same time. So let's do that now. So uh, the way we're going to convert these characters, so in S1, we're going to get the character at the ith indexed, and we're going to use the ORD function. Now, depending on your language, it might be a different function. All we're doing is getting the ASCII value of this character with our ORD function, and we're going to subtract from it the ASCII value of lowercase, uh, lowercase a. Let's get this right. And this will map to an index. This will map to one of the 26 indexes. And to this, all we wanna do is just add one to it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste this line and do the exact same thing for S2. We're gonna, in S2 count, uh, we're gonna update the count of this character and just increment it by one. So now before we actually get to our sliding window portion, don't forget we actually have to initialize the number of matches. We're initially gonna set it to zero, but let's compare uh, each of these uh, maps or arrays. We know that there's gonna be 26 spots in the array, so we can actually just hard code that. So now we're gonna say to the number of matches, we wanna add one to it only if uh, S1 count at index i is equal to S2 count at index i. That's the only case where we'd wanna increment this by one, but if that's not the case, then we are not gonna increment it by one, so we can just say else zero, right? So else increment it by zero, which is the same as not incrementing it at all. Let's put parentheses here just to clean it up. And now we can move on. So now we're gonna do the sliding window portion. We're gonna initialize a left pointer to be at the beginning, so at index uh, zero. So 
Then we're going to have our right pointer, which is actually going to iterate through every position in S2. Uh, but we know we don't actually have to start at the first position because we already initialized our windows. So we're actually going to start at the length of one, the length of S1, because this will start us at the next character that we left off at, right? And this and this range is actually non-inclusive, so we stopped before we reached this index, so now we're actually gonna go to that index with our right pointer. But remember, what happens if matches is 26? Shouldn't we return immediately? Yeah, we can put a return statement outside of this for loop, but it'll be redundant, so we can actually put it as the first uh, statement inside of the for loop. So basically, if matches is equal to 26, then we are returning true. If that ever happens, we can immediately return true, no questions asked. But if it's not the case, then we have to update the number of matches. We know that we just visited a character at index R, and this is the part where you actually might have hoped that you used a hash map rather than an array. And that's fine. If you want to rewrite the code that I'm about to write using hash maps, I think it's perfectly fine. But I feel like I usually overuse hash maps. So this time I actually wanted to kind of show you guys the array uh, solution, even though it's a little bit more annoying. Because remember, our character is not the key of our array. We have to map that character to an index. And we can do that just like this. So S2 at index R uh, minus ord of lowercase a. So we're also going to take the ord of this because that's how we're getting the index of our count arrays. So now we can actually use this index. But what are we going to use it for? Well, we know that this character is the character that was just added to our uh, window in our S2 string. So we're going to increment the count of this by one. But now that we just incremented the count of it by one, it could be possible that now it exactly equals the count in S1. So if that's the case, if now that we incremented this and now it finally equals exactly S1 count at the same index, at the same character, then uh, we can increment our number of matches by one. But it's possible that also by incrementing this, instead of making it exactly equal, we made it too large. We made it exactly bigger than the target by one. That's how you know we have got to actually decrement the number of matches. So basically else if S1 count at the same index plus one is now exactly equal to S2 count at the index. And if this is the case, that means they were equal, they were exactly equal, but we just incremented S2 count by one, so now we made them unequal. So then we actually have to decrement the number of matches by one. Okay, and that's pretty much the entire algorithm, but there's one last thing, and I'm just gonna go ahead and actually copy and paste this entire block. Uh, because we're going to do the exact opposite thing. We know that we're adding a character to the right of our window, but at index L, at index left, uh, we removed a character. So we're just going to replace this with the opposite case. Right here, I replaced the R with an L. And here, instead of incrementing the count, we're going to decrement the count because this is the character that we just removed from the left side of our window. And here, what we're going to say, this is actually going to stay the same. If somehow by decrementing this, we made the counts exactly equal, then we're going to uh, increment our matches by one. But if somehow by decrementing this value, we changed it from being exactly equal to now being too small, meaning it's now going to be equal to S count, S1 count minus one. If we changed it from being exactly equal to now being slightly too small, that's when we are going to decrement the number of matches. Right, so we really didn't have to make too many changes to this block of code, but that's actually the entire algorithm, except uh, we know our right pointer is being incremented by one each time, but we also want to make sure our left pointer is being incremented by one each time as well. And after that, we are done. Then finally, we can return false. Well, not quite, because it's possible that after our loop ex uh, ex exited, right, the last iteration of our loop, we didn't check after that if our matches were equal to 26. So instead, we're actually going to return uh, does matches equal 26. So it's going to return true. If it does equal 26, it's going to return false. If it doesn't equal 26, now let's run the code to make sure that it works. 
and on the left, you can see that it does, and it's pretty efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel, and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.